नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम last lecture we defined what is an internal effectiveness factor and we started to derive the relationship between the internal effectiveness factor and the thiele modulus we'll continue from there in this lecture So we considered a spherical catalyst pellet where the concentration of the reacting species is CaS at the exterior surface of the catalyst pellet which is diffusing inside and there is simultaneous diffusion of the species and the surface reaction which is happening in the catalyst. So we observed that the we can define an internal effectiveness factor as a ratio of the rate at which the reaction happens the actual reaction rate divided by the rate at which the reaction happens if the every internal surface is actually at the same concentration as that of the surface suppose if the temperature of the surface is ts then one can say that the uh, ras which is the rate at which the uh, reaction happens if the every location inside the catalyst pellet is at the surface concentration and surface temperature we also observed that this is equal to minus ra prime by minus ra s prime and that's also equal to minus ra double prime by minus ra s double prime which is basically rate based on the density of the catalyst and this is rate based on the actual uh, surface area which is available for reaction and that should be equal to the rate at the moles of species that is consumed per unit time divided by the moles of the species that is consumed if the concentration and temperature everywhere inside the reactor is that of the uh, exterior pellet surface conditions we also saw in the last class that mas which is the rate at which the species reacts if the if every location on inside the catalyst is the surface conditions that is equal to minus ras into 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is the radius of the pellet now if it is a first order reaction then this is essentially equal to k1 cas into 4 by 3 pi r cube so if we are able to estimate what is ma then we are done we should be able to find out what is this internal effectiveness factor if we know even we already know mas if we find out what is ma we should be able to estimate what is the internal effectiveness factor of for this particular case so let us try to find out what is the actual rate at which the species is actually consumed per unit time when the reaction is actually happening now intuitively because we assume the steady state conditions one can actually think of the total rate at which or the total rate at which the species is consumed because of the reaction should essentially be equal to rate at which the species actually enters into the catalyst pellet at the exterior surface of the pellet and clearly so if i draw a catalyst pellet here so whatever is the rate at which the reaction is happening inside in this volume should be equal to whatever rate at which the species is actually entering from the exterior surface of the catalyst pellet so we can take advantage of this aspect and we can attempt to find out what is the actual rate at which the species actually undergoes reaction so let us see how to do that so ma is essentially the flux of let's say species a into the pellet at r equal to capital r that multiplied by the exterior surface area which is essentially 4 pi r square 
Now how do we find flux of the species that enters into the pellet at the exterior surface that is r equal to r? We know the we know the flux equation, we know what is the relationship between the flux and the concentration gradient and that is essentially given by W A in the radial direction. Remember that we have assumed that the increasing R is my is the positive direction. So, therefore, the flux at which the species is entering at the exterior surface is essentially equal to minus d e effective diffusivity into d c a by d r evaluated at r equal to capital R. Now, we know what is the relationship between concentration and position. So, suppose if we introduce the dimensionless quantities recall that the dimensionless quantity psi is essentially c a by c a s and lambda is r divided by capital R. And so, we can introduce the dimensionless quantities here. So, therefore, m a is essentially equal to minus of minus d e into c a s into d c a c a s into d psi divided by d lambda and that multiplied by 4 pi r square. So, we can cancel out this and that should be equal to d e c a s into d psi by d lambda into 4 pi r and this evaluated at lambda equal to 1, this evaluated at lambda equal to 1. So, we know what is the relationship between psi and we know what is the relationship between psi and lambda we already know the solution of the equation. So, from that we can actually estimate what is d psi by d lambda and we can plug in here and find out what is m a. So, psi is essentially given by the solution of the equation which we saw in the last class is sin hyperbolic phi 1 lambda where phi 1 is the corresponding T v modulus sin hyperbolic phi 1. So, from here we can find out that d psi by d lambda is essentially equal to phi 1 cos hyperbolic phi 1 lambda divided by lambda sin hyperbolic phi 1 minus sin hyperbolic phi 1 lambda divided by lambda square into sin hyperbolic phi 1. Now, if we evaluate this at lambda is equal to 1, so we need to evaluate this expression at lambda is equal to 1. So, therefore, d psi by d lambda at lambda is equal to 1 is essentially given by phi 1 cos hyperbolic phi 1 divided by lambda sin hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 by lambda square into sin hyperbolic phi 1 divided by sin hyperbolic phi 1. So, these two terms essentially will cancel out and so this is equal to phi 1 by lambda and cos hyperbolic by sin hyperbolic is nothing but cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 by lambda square. So, d psi by d lambda at lambda equal to 1 is essentially given by this expression here which is phi 1 Thiele modulus corresponding to the first order reaction divided by lambda which is basically the dimensionless position into cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 by lambda square and we can also substitute lambda this lambda is essentially equal to 1. So, that is given by phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1. So, recall that we need to substitute this is equal to 1 and we have to set lambda square is equal to 1. So, from here we see that d psi by d lambda at lambda is equal to 1 is essentially given by phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1. So, this we can substitute in the rate at which the species is consumed. So, that is m a which is equal to d e c a s into phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 into 4 pi r. Now, recall that m a s is essentially equal to 
k1 cas into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, thus the internal effectiveness factor eta is essentially given by ma by mas and that is equal to de cas into phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 into 4 pi r divided by k1 cas into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, we can cancel out the like terms here pi goes away we can cancel out 4 and C A S goes away and 1 R we can cancel out we will get this. So, essentially this is nothing but phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1 divided by k 1 into R square by D E and that whole multiplied by 3. What is this term in the denominator? this is nothing but phi square. So, we know that this is equal to phi 1 square which is for the first order reaction. So, clearly from here we can find out that eta is equal to the effectiveness internal effectiveness factor eta for first order reaction for spherical catalyst particle is essentially given by phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1. So, this effectiveness factor relationship with the Thiele modulus is actually a very powerful relationship because this helps in identifying when the reaction is actually surface reaction limited or internal diffusion limited. Suppose we look at suppose let us say we plot this expression here we want to plot this expression phi versus eta let us say that we are actually plotting it in log scale. Let us say we plot it in log scale and what is the maximum value of eta as per the definition? So, in the case of spherical catalyst pellet under isothermal conditions, the maximum rate at which the reaction can happen is actually at the surface condition if everywhere inside the catalyst pellet it is at the surface conditions when there are when it is a constant density system where there is no volume changes. So, therefore, eta which is the internal effectiveness factor essentially it tend it is equal to 1 if the surface reaction is controlling. if surface reaction is controlling. Now, if surface reaction is controlling it means that the diffusional limitations are essentially absent and recall that if diffusional limitations are absent then essentially the TV modulus is actually a, a very small number. We observed in the last couple of lectures that when TV modulus is large it is essentially the diffusion limitation the diffusional limitations which is controlling the overall reaction rate and if phi is very small it is essentially the surface reaction which is actually controlling the overall reaction rate. So, from here when eta is equal to 1 essentially it corresponds to the fact that phi 1 is actually small. So, this corresponds to when phi 1 is, is small. So, let us try to plot this eta versus phi. So, eta goes from 0 to 1 recall remember that it is log scale and phi can have any value starting from very small value to very large 10, 20, 30 whatever number that is. And so, we expect that close to phi very small value the effectiveness factor essentially is behaves as though it is surface reaction controlling. So, eta is essentially close to 1 when phi is very small, but then when as phi increases the effectiveness factor goes down which means that the diffusion is actually now controlling the overall reaction rate and the diffusion limitation. So, this region is essentially the diffusional diffusional limited region and this region is the surface reaction controlling region or surface reaction controlling region. Now, So, in between 
in between these two regions it cannot be said what is actually controlling it could be both surface reaction controlling or it could be the diffusion reaction diffusion limiter in fact there will be contributions of both the surface reaction and the diffusion limitation simultaneously actually controlling the overall rate of the reaction. Now clearly this picture has a strong implication in terms of the design of the reactor. So a moment we know what is phi which is essentially the essentially given by the properties or intrinsic properties of the reaction and the species that is diffusing. Moment we know that we can actually find out whether the reaction is surface reaction controlling or diffusional limited regime diffusional limitations which are actually controlling the overall rate of the reaction. Now in principle the exercise can be done for other orders of the reaction. It can be done even when the reaction is actually second order, third order or any nth order reaction. So typically for an nth order reaction, nth order reaction phi n square which is the Thiele modulus square of the Thiele modulus is given by k n which is the corresponding rate constant into r square into C a s power n minus 1 into the effective diffusivity. So now if I try to approximate the values of eta one can actually approximate the values of eta for large phi for large phi let us say we first consider the case of first order reaction first order reaction where eta is essentially given by 3 by phi 1 square into phi 1 cot hyperbolic phi 1 minus 1. So if I now plug in the values of different values of phi, what we essentially find is that when the Thiele modulus is let us say approximately 20, when Thiele modulus phi 1 is approximately 20, then the eta essentially scales as 3 divided by phi 1. So this expression essentially approximates to 3 divided by uh, phi 1 that is the functional form of eta and phi 1 for large values of the Thiele modulus. And so that essentially is what you see in this picture here for large values of Thiele modulus you will see that it essentially goes as an inverse relationship with the with the corresponding Thiele modulus eta goes as 3 over phi in the diffusion limited regimes. Now one can do this exercise of approximation for an nth order reaction as well. So let us do that. So for an nth order reaction, let us say phi n is the corresponding Thiele modulus for under diffusion limited conditions, diffusion limited conditions that is phi n is large. Then eta which is the internal effectiveness factor essentially goes as 2 by n plus 1 to the power of half into 3 by phi n which is essentially equal to 2 by n plus 1 to the power of half into 3 by r into square root of de divided by k n into c a s to the power of 1 minus n by 2. So for large value of phi for any nth order reaction where n is the order of the reaction eta would essentially still scale as 3 by phi n except that you now have a pre multiplication factor which corresponds to the order of the reaction that you are looking at. So now one can actually make this plot of eta versus phi suppose let us say I plot phi n. And once again I use log scale, I use log scale. So for a first order reaction, this is the typical curve that you see for a first order reaction. So this is for n equal to 1 and for a second order reaction what is seen is that the eta versus phi still has a similar profile except that it is actually slightly below the it is slightly below for the uh, second order case. So this is for n equal to 2 and for a 0 order reaction for a 0 order reaction essentially this is the eta versus phi graph. So this is for n equal to 0 which is a 0 order reaction 
and this is for n equal to 1 and this blue line is essentially for n equal to 2. So, that is the typical eta versus phi graph for reactions of different order and this is and this can be sketched for any order of the reaction using the uh, corresponding expression or relationship between eta and the TV modulus. So, what is the purpose of finding such an effectiveness factor? What is the purpose of finding an effectiveness factor? So, if we recall that the definition of effectiveness factor is the actual rate at which or the observed reaction rate to the rate at which the reaction would happen if every location inside the catalyst has the same condition as that of the surface conditions. So, therefore, we can now rewrite the actual reaction rate as effectiveness factor eta multiplied by minus R a s which is basically the intrinsic property R a s depends on only on the intrinsic kinetics. So, it is often not possible to measure everything that is happening inside the catalyst. So, so if we know eta versus phi and eta because this can be expressed as a function of the Thiele modulus and Thiele modulus is basically a combination of the intrinsic parameters. One can estimate one can estimate phi using intrinsic parameters. So, for a given system if we know the intrinsic parameters we can estimate the Thiele modulus. If we know the Thiele modulus from the from the relationship between effectiveness factor and the Thiele modulus we can actually find out what is the effectiveness factor. So, if we know the effectiveness factor then we can easily predict what is the actual or overall rate at which the reaction is happening irrespective of what is the regime in which the reaction is actually happening. So, even if it is even if the reaction is happening and this is log scale. So, even if the reaction is happening in the in middle range in the middle range where we do not know whether it is exactly surface reaction controlling or the or the diffusion limited conditions, we can still actually find out what is the overall rate at which the reaction is happening using the relationship from the effectiveness factor which for most cases for an nth order reaction can actually be estimated as a function of Thiele modulus which is only a function of the intrinsic parameters. So, therefore, we can actually simply based on the intrinsic parameters and the kin intrinsic kinetic we should be able to predict what is the overall rate at which the reaction might happen for the given conditions at which the reaction is being conducted. And this actually has phenomenal advantage because the rate at which this reaction would happen at surface conditions is controlled by the concentration of the species at the surface. And we have assumed that the concentration of the species at the surface is equal to the concentration of the species at bulk because there are no external mass transport limitations. In that case if we know the bulk concentration then we essentially know what is the overall rate at which the reaction is actually happening in the catalyst pellet and this has strong implications in terms of the design of catalytic reactors. So, for a first order reaction case for the first order reaction case if internal diffusional limitations exist controls the rate controls the overall rate controls the overall rate then we can simply write the overall reaction rate r a is essentially given by 3 by 5 into minus r a s and minus r a s is essentially given by 3 by phi 1 into k 1 into C a s where k 1 is the corresponding rate constant. So, from here if we substitute for phi 1 we will see that this is equal to 3 by r into square root of k 1 by effective diffusivity into k 1 into C a s and that is equal to 3 by r into square root of k 1 d e into C a s. 
So, simply by using the eta versus phi relationship one can actually find out what is the actual overall rate at which the reaction actually happens. Now, this exercise of finding the relationship between eta versus T v modulus can actually be done for different geometries as well. So, we can do the same exercise for a slab geometry. So, what we looked at is basically spherical catalyst, what we so far looked at is the is a, a spherical catalyst pellet. And recall the example that we saw in one of the lectures where I showed the actual catalyst. The catalyst pellets can be cylindrical in nature, it can be cylindrical catalyst pellet. For instance, the cylinder could be at where the species actually is diffusing from the curved surface and radially into the catalyst pellet. And there could be a third case where you have a, a slab catalyst. So, we can have a situation where the catalyst is a simple planar geometry and species actually diffuses in, in one of the dimensions let us say and let us say that we actually you know seal one, one end of the catalyst. Uh, this this uh, framework is also applicable when we have a cylindrical catalyst pellet. So, the framework that you develop for slab catalyst where you look at one dimensional diffusion and reaction is applicable for cylindrical catalyst pellet as well when the, when the fluid species is actually diffusing in the axial direction and the reaction is actually happening anywhere inside the catalyst pellet. So, if you want to model the slab catalyst, we have to follow the same procedure of writing the diffusion and reaction model. So, the procedure is to write the diffusion, write the mass balance, write the mass balance basically one has diffusion plus reaction in the mass balance because we assume steady states and then we can solve the model, solve and find out what is the relationship between T V modulus and phi, what is the relationship between Thiele modulus and the effectiveness factor uh, and we will see that in the next class. We will see how to find out the relationship between Thiele modulus and the uh, effectiveness factor for a, a slab geometry in the next class. Thank you.